This is, this is, this is. How's it going, man? Are you on tour right now? Yeah, we just got back Sunday. So I'm plugging back into reality. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, so you still on the crypto thing? I mean, I still believe in it, but I'm not actively doing all that stuff now. Uh, had to pull back some funds, you know what I mean? <laughs> of course, of course. Things go up and down. They go in waves. I personally, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I haven't been paying attention to crypto lately, to be honest. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> yeah, there's a whole new really thing. Is. There's AI. There's, I mean, there's there's AI. That's like kind of enveloping every sort of sector of life. Robotics, now that Tesla just just said that you can get a robot for $30,000 that will do your dishes, clean your kitchen, hump your wife, whatever. I don't know what, <laughs> what it yeah. all does. So, so welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad to be back. Goalkeeper. So you guys just got off tour. Um, give everybody a little recap of what you guys have been up to since you were last on the podcast. Obviously, uh, probably a lot. Probably, a, a you know. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I know you have a new a new EP coming out. Is it out yet? It's not out yet, right? Uh, no, it actually came out uh, October fourth. October fourth. Uh, it's out. All right, pins and needles. Yes, it's out now. Go listen. I've been listening to it. It actually is really catchy. There's really good hooks. Uh, but before we get into that, let's let's get into recap. What have you been up to, goalkeeper? Tell us about the tour and and all whatever you whatever you got. Yeah. Well, since since uh, since I've been on, I think we released a full length called "I Wish I Met You Sooner," and uh, that uh, that was great. Um, and the response to that has been awesome. Um, and then uh, more recently, uh, we've just been touring a lot, uh, trying to hit everywhere we can in a van. Um, and uh, just recently, we put out uh, our new EP called "Pins and Needles." Um, it's a little bit of a departure from our our full length. It's a little more heavy, a little more emo, um, but you know. Uh, we were, we've always been a fun loving band. We'll never stop being that, but, um, you know, things haven't been going right a lot. (laughs) And I think all of us are feeling that. And so we channeled some of that energy into the new album and I think it's heavier. I think it's awesome. I, it still has like all the catchiness that you'd want from a goalkeeper, uh, album. Um, but yeah, that's, I think the biggest, uh, change. And then, uh, we just got off of a tour, uh, with our Canadian buddies and calling all captains. And it was fantastic. Uh, the crowds were awesome. Um, I was trying not to jinx it while I was on tour, but I think we did 15 out of 15 great shows in a row with them. And uh, I could not be more stoked about that. Um, got to see a lot of the Midwest. Uh, we went up the East Coast, and then we played Canada for the first time, which was an experience. Uh, never, I've actually never been to Canada, so that was like an experience. Um, was everyone polite, yeah. and did you try poutine? Oh, P- Poutine we had the first night in Montreal <laughs> at a place called Poutineville. So, you know, if, if it's named that, you know, they got to have good poutine, which was excellent. And everybody was really nice, you know. I think my biggest takeaways, the two, the one thing that I noticed, which was really weird, which might, this might be a little bit of a niche thing, but I noticed that in venues, they don't have trash cans anywhere. Like in the States, there's going to be trash cans in most places. And then in, in, the, in Canada, I even asked the, um, the you know, the touring band, like, what's the deal with this? And they're like, oh, well, I never really noticed that. I guess people just put it back on the bar, which, like, makes sense. But as a bartender, I'm just like, that feels like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Huh. So, I never, uh, never. I, mean, I, I couldn't be more stoked on Canada. Like, we had a bunch of really good shows. The Probably the biggest one was uh, Toronto, which was so cool. We got to play Lee's Palace, which was awesome. Awesome. So, yep. Mm-hmm. We've played there before. It's yeah. Good spot. Um, man that's great man i'm I'm so glad that you had a good experience like that is not the average experience for for young um kind of up and coming punk bands touring and it's it's really hard to get crowds i mean you guys have been doing you have a full link that you've got new music coming but you've been doing the grind but still it's like some people do that grind for like 10 years and nothing you know yeah and you guys have been around less than 10 years right is it yeah uh, this will be eight years for eight us. years coming up cre- um, creeping on 10 I know. Crazy. We were really, really, we were really fortunate to be able to go up there with a Canadian band. I think, like their audience was very warm to us, which was very nice. So we're very fortunate about that. Cool. That's cool. Hey, so I want to know what is what's like maybe the average day on tour for Goalkeeper. What do you guys like to get into? Yeah. So I'll run it down. So because uh, I it's all fresh in my mind. Good. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so uh, typically we're waking up at a Planet Fitness in the van somewhere, um, and we'll all wake up. Cody, our drummer, um, he's uh, he's he's got ADHD, so he's very like you know as soon as he wakes up, he's ready to jump out of bed and do whatever. So he usually he gets everybody rolling. Uh, we're usually done at Planet Fitness like around I don't know ten ish o'clock. Uh, and you then, do uh, the three S's. What's that? Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, after that, um, we try to find like usually gas station food or something like that, and then um, head over to the next venue. Uh, usually like around two, three o'clock when we're getting there, the first thing we'll do is try to find some cold brew. Um, uh, that's our uh, photographer Bill. His uh, his thing. He's always got to have it like post lunch, like afternoon, because gives him like the energy to you know keep going the rest of the day. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we always try to find a cool like coffee spot which we found a lot of cool ones over the years. And then, um, you know, load in. We're us- we usually try to get there as early as possible, trying to, you know, put on, like, the best, uh, be the best, you know, most organized and, you know, on time and all that. Um, and then uh, once we're all set up, you know, we just kind of chill out for a little while. Uh, you know, sometimes try to for- find more food. We're always eating for some reason, you know what I mean? Just, like, we always try to find the best uh local or the the local fast food places like one of my favorite places to go in um in uh, the midwest is culver's um i just think their their burgers are the bomb and uh culver's culver's yeah i've never heard of it no i don't uh, think so they're from wisconsin uh it's like a blue logo um they uh their specialty is butter burgers um so they, you get like a couple like smash burgers that are you know really like super crispy not like well done like it, the butter in the burger like mm. helps like keep it like super crispy and then um that you can get sides of cheese curds and stuff and it's all from wisconsin so you know it's the good stuff you know what i mean yeah it's a real european vibe like canadian almost canadian right yeah wow that's actually sounds that sounds good i should try that yeah. out. um my favorite place that i can think of right now i've talked about it somewhat recently denver it's this place mm. called chopstickers and okay. it's like maybe a three or four restaurant chain it's not a big chain but it is a small chain in in, in denver or in in colorado not just denver but i went to the denver one which is the newest branch as far as i can tell and mm. man that I, every time i go to denver now i go there and it's just like this little noodle like kind of fast mm. food you know they make it right there mm-hmm. but dan dan noodle that's the one that's the one. What what what's in those? Like what kind of like noodles do you like? It's it's like um it's a thinner noodle with almost it, it's got a tinge of a peanut sauce like it's not a Thai mm. restaurant at all. It's like dim sum. It's a dim sum place. Mm-hmm. You can get dim sum, oh, you okay. get yeah. So like that's the main thing and then this dan dan noodle is just one of their dishes and it's got such a I think it's ground pork is the main meat in it and the main protein but um it's got bok choy which to me if it's got bok choy i'm sold like i love bok choy i have ever (laughs) since i first tried it somewhere in hollywood in in the in the late 90s (laughs) Mm. so weird but uh little things like that kind of get me you know if it's got bok choy or i'm really into green peppers um okay on almost anything like just like a little slice of a green pepper on on any pizza is amazing on sandwiches on burritos and i've started i've gone so far sorry to take over your thing i've gone so far into it that i've started doing the green pepper thing where like little slices with jalapenos now because to me it's all about the green crunch and Mm -hmm. jalapeno just gives a little more spice than a regular bell pepper does back to you my friend day to day so can I ask you a question about Planet Fitness while we're yeah. on your day-to-day? Does everybody have sort of the $10 a month, um, what, subscription, yeah. what yeah. membership model or whatever? Is, that, is every single person on the tour kind of have to have that? Or do you have like a buddy pass system? What's the situation? So we tour pretty lightly. It's just the three of us and our photographer, Bill. And Bill already had the black card. We all decided that it was worthwhile for us to get the black card. So we pay like 25 bucks a month each. Um, and I mean, you know, Cody goes to planet fitness, like on his days off or when he's not like on the road anyway, I should be uh, <laughs> <laughs> to work out. You mean, right? Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Out, okay. Like, yeah. Not just the shower, you know? Right. Right. Um, but, uh, 
uh, no, like it's worked out really well. And then like, you know, if we're touring with another band, um, that it, it works out because like, if there's no obvious rest stops or anywhere where we can park the van, we can stop at a planet fitness. And like, because we have the black car, we can get a guest in. So we'll usually all go in together. Uh, and so it's, it kind of works out for, for everybody who's like touring. So you've gone, it, you've gone past the days of like sneaking people in. You're like, all right, we don't need to do that now. Yeah. We can afford well, everything's it. like on our phones. I mean, like, I'm sure we could probably sneak people in, but it just got to the point where we're like, I don't know. I feel like I can justify this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's funny because, you know, I'll be made fun of by my friends because I'm, I would still sneak into the drive-in if, if the opportunity <laughs> arose, not because I want to rip people off, of course, but it's just kind of fun. And I do this with the ferry, sir, you know, the ferry terminal and I haven't done it in years, but mm -hmm. to me, it's like fresh as, as a daisy. It's like, it's like yesterday, but going up to back to Bremerton, we always have to take the ferry after shows. And a lot of times we have a big group of people and on the way back, you have to pay not only for the car and driver, you got to pay for each individual person. And so to save money, and that could be like, you know, a hundred dollars at the end of the day. So like to mm -hmm. save money, we would, as kids, as teenagers would always try to hide a few people. And I always love to hide because it's just, you know, it's exciting. You're like, okay, are we going to get caught? And they're yeah. always like, well, how many people you got in there? Oh, just two, just the two of us. You know, this huge yeah. van. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, the back of the van under blankets, they're all, everybody's laughing and stuff. Yeah, but today, <laughs> you're right, today, everything's on a phone. Everything's a, an app, a mobile app, and sort of digitized, and you have to, like, sign in each person. And you can't really get away with it like that in a mm -hmm. lot of these new new places, so... Uh, you got to find other ways, other ways to have fun. Yeah. So what do you, so, so continuing on, you load in, look for more food. Mm -hmm. What's next? yeah. And then like, really, it's just kind of getting in the zone. Like me and Cody usually work the merch stand. Uh, Mark's usually doing all the guitar tech stuff since that's his bag. And, uh, you know, once it gets closer to show time, I don't really have much of a, like a routine. I just do some deep breathing. And, um, sometimes if I'm feeling a little congested, I, I do, uh, I do like I sing a couple songs that I know help like get my get my throat cleared out. Um, but outside of that, you know, I'm I heard a uh, uh, John Florini from uh, Trophy I say one time that his his routine uh, getting ready for a show is he walks on stage and goes, "Oh fuck, it's time." So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of what I subscribe to right now. Um, but then uh, play the set and then uh, you know uh, try to close out the show and then right after the show, no matter what time it is, we always try to hit McDonald's. We're big McChicken people. Um, and we found out in Canada that the McChicken is actually like a, it's a different sandwich. We didn't end up getting that. It's the junior chicken in Canada mm. and they're fantastic. Like I'm all about that. Um, but yeah, like, and then after that, it's just, where's the next planet fitness? We try not to drive too much, after the show, just cause like you're getting done late, you know, all of us take turns driving, you know what I mean? So we just try to make it like uh, like an hour, hour and a half outside of the city just to, you know, get a little bit of headway unless we absolutely have to be somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, then we try to push it. But in general, you know, we try to be pretty conservative cause you know, night driving, you never know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. for so. sure. So I like that, that spicy chicken, uh, you know, at oh, McDonald's, yeah. but, you're eating McDonald's every night, every Not night. Not necessarily every night. Oh, but yeah. but but it's like if you can, you're like, yeah, gotta yeah, get that like, after show. Know, food. It's, it's it's more of a feel thing. Like um, usually, Mark drives after shows, and uh, the, me, Cody, and Bill will uh, like all look at each other and go, "Is it time?" And then we'll just go, "Mick, chick in, chick in," <laughs> and Mark will be like, "All right, whatever." And so then we'll go. But I mean, we've actually, I say that we've actually been trying to get a little more healthy on tour just because it's so hard, you know, when it's, you're eating gas station food every day, um, you know, so we're trying to find like some of the, some of the other like consistent things. Like we started going to smoothie places, started getting like bowls from like Moe's or Cadoba um, instead of like, I feel like I went on a run of like 12 days straight eating a burger or some kind of red meat, mm -hmm. which like is great. I love that. But like my body doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you got to mix in some greens and stuff every once in a while. Yeah, back in our days, our early days touring in vans, it was all Taco Bell. That was usually mm -hmm. first meal of the day was Taco Bell. Last meal of the day could be could be Taco Bell. But one thing that hasn't changed over the years is pizza. Pizza is almost mm -hmm. always 
what we get after shows um, just because it's convenient. Pizza mm. places are open late. Everybody likes pizza, right? <laughs> and the only thing we're missing is ice cream, pizza and ice cream. So. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That was actually Mark. Mark's had a stop at a couple ice cream places recently. That's not usually a, a place. We got ice cream in Montreal and it was delicious. Um, I love yeah. ice cream. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm this, a big candy bar guy, but I would fuck up some ice cream. <laughs> I think. I think honestly, this podcast should just be all food related rather than music yeah. related. Like that's the thing that I've been talking about more than anything. It's just always food. But yeah, um, yeah I, getting healthy on tour is. It's one of those oxymorons. It's like jumbo Ooh. shrimp because right. touring in it in itself is not healthy unless you have like a crazy budget where you can have a you know a massage therapist come out every day, uh, you know, all the things that kind of recuperate you, but um, just like professional athletes, I think musicians really put their bodies through a lot. Mm -hmm. But we just don't get the recovery and the regime kind of talked about. Uh, mm -hmm. like professional music, uh, sorry, professional athletes would. Um, mm -hmm. It's just not really thought about, right? Like the, the a training aspect of it or, and I think maybe nowadays individual artists definitely are fitness minded, mm -hmm. um, but it's still something that's not really part of your everyday thing. So, and, and, and like you said, you're, you're trying to get healthier, you're trying to go to smoothie places, but like there's only so much time in the day so, so right. you know, and, and you're dictated a lot by location and what's available mm -hmm. and what's open at the time you can get it. So mm -hmm. it's it's a uphill battle for sure. But hey, life is an uphill battle. <laughs> it's it's, mm -hmm. it's what it is. Yeah. It's what it is. Yeah. No, I I uh, I I kind of recently became more conscious of it because you know when we first started touring, I was like, oh, like we're out on the road, we're playing shows. I can drink beers, I can eat pizza, twenty four hour hours a day, whatever. Who cares? Yeah. And then the body was like, no, you can't. <laughs> and so, um, and you know, I'm 34, so I'm probably on the, you know, I'm the older guy in the band, and uh, you know, so I'm always the one like, we gotta get more sleep. You know what I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> meanwhile the guys are like, no, we can push it. Like, let's go. And I'm like, no, because why? Like, there's no point. But like, you know, at the end of the day. We, we make it work and you know if we're really feeling down or if somebody's feeling sick or something we, we do try to make sure you know we're prioritizing you know other things and you know it's not like we don't ever stop in hotels either like you know usually on off days or like days you know we had a really big night like we'll splurge on a hotel room and that changes the game you know because i'm sleeping on a bench seat in the back of the van cody's sleeping on the ground on the van it's it, mark's sleeping in the uh captain's chair it's like straight up the whole oh, time wow. with, like you know, but he likes to be able to get out. He likes easy access to get out. So, uh, just in case something happens. So, you know, we, we try to make it work. This tour was honestly a lot more manageable. And also it helps when all the shows are great. You know what I mean? They're like, I can't even express like there were zero duds in 17 dates. Like it was awesome. It could not have gone any better. Wow. That's, that's great, man. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. That's a, that's a good, that's a pretty good day. Like it's a little groundhog and you kind of, that's why it, it kind of wears on people after, you know, a month on tour or whatever it is. Like it can get, it can get rough, but, but if you can get through that, those mm -hmm. are the people that stick around, you know, the people that can kind of like, all right, I kind of have some sort of, I don't know what it is, but for me, I never thought too much about the grind of touring and it, cause it was always Every day was new. Every day was a new experience, new people. Uh, you know, just getting to play shows itself was was a huge reward for me, and I'm sure it is for you guys too. So, mm -hmm. what about new songs? I mean, are you have you guys been playing the new songs on the tour? Yes. So, uh, when we first started the tour, uh, we played "Black Hole," which is our first single, Great and song. then uh, we were playing um, "Everything That's Ever Happened Happened in New Jersey." Uh, which is our longest song title. Uh, but that was the video we dropped with the record. And then um, uh, our eat, our, well, our show in Philly, we played Philly, which is our hometown, and uh, played to a sold out crowd, like 190 people at Kung Fu Necktie. And um, the, uh, uh, we ended up playing the whole EP front to back that day. Uh, Captains let us headline that night. And then, um, after that, we we added Salem Weather uh, to the set, 
and overall people were really vibing with it um in fact uh i think some of the later dates even in canada like we heard people singing black hole which was awesome you know i mean that song has only been out for like a month ish you know what i mean mm -hmm. so like it was really cool to see people like resonating with that stuff right away and like based on the stats we've been seeing on spotify you know it seems like you know people are still listening to it and they're like vibing with it and some of the stuff that we didn't necessarily promote right away seems to be rising a little bit which is cool like salem weather seems to be one that's like really resonating with people so yeah um yeah so i'm stoked about that and then we have still like we've been writing constantly still so we still have some stuff we're working on um looking forward to getting back in the studio later on uh early next year so right. um really pumped to keep keep the train going you know Let's talk about our boy Nick Brzezzi. He been producing. He produced this EP. Does he produce all your stuff or just he some stuff? Produced, so he produced. We worked. We first worked with him at his old studio, the Lumberyard, and we did Screwdriver with him. And then after that, um, we went to a couple different people. Uh, we wanted to like kind of get out of South Jersey and Philly and like try to experience some new stuff. And then um, he uh, started working at this studio called Gra uh, the Gradwell House in uh, Haddon Heights, New Jersey. And I cannot like express enough how awesome that place is. The The big room sounds amazing. Um, it's all redone. It used to be a Masonic Lodge and they redid it to be like really, really nice. And they've got recording things everywhere. You can record a song in the bathroom if you want to, because they got plugs into the board, which nice. is cool. Yeah. And uh, so he's been, he's been helping us out with that. And honestly, the stuff has been awesome. And he's just great because, like, he's got a really good sense of, like, pop, you know, like, uh, catchy choruses and stuff like that, which is something that's kind of our strength. And so he kind of helps us, like, mold everything. We always like to say we bring, like, songs 80% done to the studio so that they can be all the dynamics and all the nuances can be kind of tweaked. And he really helps us find that. Um, he also helps me with bass a lot. Like, you know, I'm, I, I don't consider myself a musician. I'm just a guy who knows how to play guitar, you know? So like some of the nuances, like some of the bass stuff, he, he kind of helps me, uh, you know, put some flair in there and stuff. Um, but he produced, uh, he was the engineer and produced, um, uh, I wish I met you sooner, our full length. And then this one he produced and we had, um, Will Beasley, uh, uh, mix it. Uh, and then Gradwell House mastered it. So, um, and we are going to be going back to Nick again. So we're really stoked on, on that. Right on. Yeah. And I, I just love Nick. He's, he's just got something about him that makes me smile, makes me think good yeah. thoughts. His name, his name, he's a cool name. Brzezzi. Nick Brzezzi. Yeah. Yeah. Character. He's, like, he's just like effortlessly cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's a cool guy. I, I wish I was like that. I'm <laughs> too weird. He doesn't <laughs> care about anything. He's just, he's no. doing him. He's doing his thing. Yeah. That's great. Well, that's yeah. cool, man. Like, yeah, where you guys are kind of from, uh, Philly, Jersey, it's all like this cool, big, there's so many bands, there's so many artists and there's so many places to play and so many things to really do. I'm sure it makes your head spin. Sometimes you're like, there's too many choices because mm -hmm. it's such a powerhouse of an area. Um, and then you got New York right there, Boston, and, and the rest of Pennsylvania just opens up. Um, but yeah, I mean, how was it kind of growing up as, uh, as you say, a guy that knows how to play guitar amongst just a sea of all these talented musicians and artists? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, for me, I always got along with musicians. And I mean, I, I play enough to like know what, kind of what I'm doing. Like, I can't read music. Like, if you tell me, oh, play an A, I'll be like, what number is it? You know what I mean? Like, I'm one of those guys. But, like, uh, I feel like I've got, like, a natural ability to kind of jam. And, like, you know, once I kind of know where everybody's at, I can, like, jump in and, and, and do that. And as far as, like, you know, the music scene was concerned, I mean, Philly, Jersey, New York, you know, that whole area, like, there's so much going on that you just have to, like, for us, I mean, I feel like we just grinded. You know what I mean? Like, I was in um, I was in some garage bands in high school that like uh, never really made. We played like two shows. We never really made it out of the garage. And then um, I joined a band when I graduated college that we were together for about three and a half years. And that's what I got like the lay of the land. You know, like what what everybody's doing, who's booking what. You know, and towards the end of that, I was kind of managing like the business end of all that. And then when I got together with Mark and Cody. Um, it was very obvious that Mark was like the networking guy and like the business sense guy 
I mean, we can all do it. We all have that in us, but like Mark's just on another level. And so we understood early on, like, let Mark run with that. We'll focus on the creativity stuff. And, you know, I did go to school for art. So I like, I have like a con conceptual mind, you know, I, I like being creative. And I think also not being like, I know that there's, there's definitely merit to understanding the music theory aspect of it. But I also think like, for me, I'm willing to take more chances and not go by the book. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, Mark is very much a music theory person. And so like, I'm also not afraid to pass this on to him and be like, what do you think? And then he helps me kind of like, you know, iron everything out. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, these chords are kind of boring. What, what if we did this? And you know, he's really good with that kind of stuff. And Cody's just like, you know, he's just on another level when it comes to drums. Like, you know, he, his mind just works in a completely different way. Um, but like, uh, one thing I just want to touch on with, with the whole like scenes, you know, how close we were to everything. Like, uh, that's one of the biggest things I think we realized during touring is like, you know, within a six hour drive of where we're based out of, we can hit probably, you know, at least four or five different a markets and then a plethora of B and C markets that all have scenes, you know? And like for us, like I, I find that that's gotta be an advantage for us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because like, I mean, I'm sure, you know, being from, you know, uh, the West coast, like every drive for you guys was probably six or seven hours. Whereas for me, I can be in Phil, I can be in New York in like two hours, you know? Yeah. So it's not like, you know, we definitely don't take that for granted. Like we're very like, that's one of the cool things about being a musician on the East coast is where like, especially like the Northeast, there's so many different places you can play and you don't have to like kill yourself, like on all these drives with gas and like the guarantee that's not going to be a good show or whatever. Like mm -hmm. we can take more risks and it works out. You know what I mean? Yeah. When it, when it comes to developing any kind of career, proximity matters, opportunity matters, and being in proximity to that opportunity is key. And so, I mean, yeah, just just realizing that, that's huge. Uh, for us, yeah, we just had to travel. We just had to drive further and, and realize that some of the things that we were doing were going to be in, in this backwoods of the Pacific Northwest. But honestly, of course, I wasn't really thinking about that back in those days, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Just, we're just going, you just grind, grind, grind. And, yeah. and, and we have all these, this vocabulary now for, for all the things that we kind of started doing intrinsically. I think a lot of it is just, you see bands and other artists that inspire you and they're just, they, they're doing what they got to do to survive. They're grinding and doing their thing. And so, you go, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grind and do my thing. But it's it's not a talked about thing. It's not like we had podcasts to listen to back then, right? It was right. all, maybe there was an occasional book, but that was all salaciousness. It was all like this party and this craziness, this guy died and this car accident. <laughs> and, you know, but, but the actual just business end of how much effort it really takes to be successful in anything we do, right? Um, mm -hmm. That was all just kind of intrinsic and built into built into the love and passion for for making music and playing music. Yeah, no, I feel you. And like honestly, like thinking about like when MXPX got started, I'm like, you guys were probably using maps and stuff like to get around. Whereas like I oh, couldn't yeah. imagine that now. <laughs> like, like. Yeah, God, like Google Maps, Apple Maps, I don't care which one you use. It's 10 million times better than, you know, using a map. <laughs> we had Rand McNally and it was just like this giant book. And we had, you know, every every city, every major city is in there. And, you know, of course, the full U.S. And that's how we got around. We would literally have like we'd have individual directions for like once you're in town for a show. Right. But to get to the show, we had to decide, okay, how's the bet? Where, where should we drive? Should we go up the 40 or should we go up the 35, you know, whatever it is, wherever we were. And mm -hmm. it was just how life was right. No, you know, cell phones were just kind of starting to be a thing. We didn't have one yet. And when we mm -hmm. finally got one, it was, it was uh, all right, we'll put our pager down, pager mm -hmm. goes down. And then we grab the cell phone and we're like, well, we're just going to leave it here in the glove box until we need it for emergencies. So, I mean, touring has changed quite a bit. Now you look in the back of the van, every single person's on their phone. Right. And, right, of, yeah. and of course they are, cause they're doing work and they're, they're living their life because mm -hmm. the internet exists, but wow. Crazy. Yeah, I couldn't crazy imagine. What did you have to do? Read a book? <laughs> like read books, watch watch a lot of TV, video games. Because we we had oh, set yeah. up like a little mini TV in the back of the van. So oh, we we yeah we'd do things. Um, I definitely yeah. read a lot of books back then. Yeah, yeah, a lot, 
Lord of the Rings. I read that whole series. That oh, might have wow. been before before I was touring, though. That might have been a long, long time ago. But anyway, dude, this is this has been so much fun. Let's talk about your bass playing because did you did you start playing bass just because of the band or were you playing bass yeah. before? Yeah, because like we need a yeah, bass so, player. I'll play bass. Yeah. So I started off as a guitarist. I've been playing guitar since I was like you know seventh grade. Um, mostly I got into it to play like punk rock, you know, like Blink-182 and stuff. So I wasn't like, uh, I wouldn't, I, you know, I mean, I, I learned some Jimi Hendrix stuff. I learned some riffs. I learned some solos, but like just enough to like, kind of like, I wasn't really passionate about necessarily like being a player. I just wanted to play what I wanted to play. You know what I mean? And then, um, and then, you know, I started playing in bands and most of the bands I played in were like punk rock bands. And, uh, so I got away with, like, I got really good at power chords, you know? Um, and then, um, basically when it was time to start goalkeeper, you know, I already, I always had like in the back of my mind, like this idea that I, it'd be cool to play bass. Cause it's like, you know, one of my idols is Mark Hoppus and like just his vibe and everything he did with his voice and his bass, I always thought was super cool. So like, I was like, why not? And so I went down uh, a local music store. I got myself a squire and, uh, we started playing around and I think, what I should have done from the get was become a bassist because everything I thought the guitars were doing was actually a bass thing. Mm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. the, like the heaviness, the, like the rhythm in the background, you know what I mean? Like it, it cre if you, if you try to play punk music without a bass, it just feels so empty. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. It was like with the bass, you can do so much to like add movement. And then like, I've always been a big rhythm guy anyway. Like I always wanted to play the drums, but my parents wouldn't let me. <laughs> so, uh, for obvious reasons. So, like, uh, you know, being able to like jam on the bass and like really, really like get to know that, like I, I I've pretty much full time become like a bassist, like, and I, I'm really eager to learn more about like the theory of it so I can become better. Uh, cause like, I just find myself now being so drawn to like different, like bass lines and rhythms that people come up with. And I'm just like, how does that make sense? It fucking sounds great. But like, if I were just to riff on this, I wouldn't know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? So like, uh, it's definitely something that like has become more of a passion for me. And, uh, you know, also with like, uh, just my equipment, like I, I upgraded to a, a Fender Mexican P bass recently. Um, we put uh, quarter pounders in it and it sounds gnarly. And, uh, I, I have a sand zamp on my pedal, which is great. It's like, you know, that's, that saves me and whenever we can't actually have an amp, you know, you just, you know, uh, direct in mm -hmm. and, uh, um, I just got a dark glass pedal, so I'm going to be playing around with that tone. Um, so I'm starting to kind of dive into that realm, you know what I mean? But that was kind of the the beginning of how I got into bass and where I'm going with it. That's cool. I think you're 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 finally getting comfortable. You're like you, you're good with the idea. Like I'm, I might be a bassist. Like this mm -hmm. this is all right. This isn't a weird thing. This is a good thing. Yeah. Embrace it. There's not a lot of bass players that sing. And there's a few, and and they're yeah. they're great great people. Um, yeah. so <laughs> I'm talking to one right now. Lemmy, you know, Lemmy, <laughs> oh, <laughs> legend. Dude, yeah. So fun, funny story. When I first started uh, in gold, or I don't know if it was what, it was right around when we first started. Uh, I watched uh, a Lemmy documentary. I forget which one it was, and um, I started after that documentary. I started putting my microphone up here, <laughs> yeah. and I started singing like that. And I was like, "This is stupid. I can't pull this off." You know what I mean? Like nobody can be that. Like, yeah, that. only Lemmy. Only Lemmy. I got to meet Lemmy once. It was which is cool. But uh, so cool. man, I, what was he like? He he was actually he was pretty drunk. So he wasn't mean yeah. or he was just like, "Hey, what's up?" You know, like nothing. Like not, he wasn't mean or or super nice. He was kind of just like. He kind of was like, I'm going to do what I got to do and say hi to these guys and go about back to my whiskey. He was drinking some Jack Daniels at the bar. Okay. But uh, we were young. Like this was a long time. This wasn't re obviously oh, yeah. recently. He's, he's gone. But this was a while ago in Florida. In, in, um, and, you know, the funny thing about that show it was in Fort Myers or Fort Lauderdale, somewhere down there. That same show we got a demo from the newfound glory kids like they weren't a band like a big band yet they were just like a local florida band and that was the show that we got a demo from them wow. and uh that kind of like eventually our manager like contacted them and put them put them on some shows but it was that show the same show that i met lemmy at uh, they were wow. down there for Ozfest. Um, okay. Ozfest was like the same the day before or the day after we were playing a show down there so 
Mm. Anyway, bass player, all that. Uh, dude, it's been great. Um, the new the new EP sounds awesome. I like that you're not just repeating the exact same sort of blueprint that Goalkeeper has done, but it does sound like Goalkeeper. It's got catchiness. Mm -hmm. Catchiness. Is that is that what Goalkeeper really means? Yeah. It's like <laughs> No, we always really? try to be catchy. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like I feel like for us like this is also a way to kind of showcase that we're not just like a one trick pony. Like obviously we love writing like pop punk jams that everybody can party to, but you know not everything is a party, you know what I mean? And I think that's kind of how we've been feeling recently. It's just like, you know, we, there, we can, we can add a new dimension to the band by, you know, experimenting with being a little heavier, experimenting with heavier lyrics, exper experimenting with like gruffer vocals and, and all that stuff. And I'll tell you what, like we, we cut a song recently that's uh, not going to be out until next year. And we're still like in the process, but, like that even feels like another level up from this, you know what I mean? And so like, we're definitely, definitely enjoying exploring this kind of new side. But in my opinion, I don't think like, I feel like you got to be catchy a little bit in order to like have people really resonate with it. You know, I think so. Um, yeah. That along with a important message, you know, I think that's really what gets people going, you know? Yeah. You got to communicate something to, to people and, and give them a reason to, to listen. But Dude, you guys are doing great. I really like the new EP. Pins and Needles, everyone. It's out now. Go listen everywhere you find your music. Of course, find, you know, Goalkeeper on tour. You guys are, uh, you might not have anything planned right away, but you will be out again and again, I'm sure, right? Yeah. Now, we're, we're uh, getting ready to announce our holiday show, uh, which will be in early December. And then um, we uh, don't have any immediate plans yet, but uh, we're working on them. So uh, we'll definitely be back out on the road next year. Right. Awesome. Dude, yeah. well thank you. I appreciate it, man. Let's uh let's get out of here and I'll let you go about your day. Yeah. Mike, thank you so much. I really appreciate being on the show. Of course, Ryan, of course. Um shout out, man. Shout out to the rest of your boys. Um and and uh good luck with uh one thing I didn't ask. Are you guys releasing what's the label that you released uh your your EP on? So we're uh, independent now. Independent. Okay. That's kind of what I was getting at. I love independent mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, you know, record labels are cool when, when they make sense, but mm -hmm. I just want to encourage everybody out there. Don't be afraid to just go for it. Self-release. If you do well, labels will come knocking, of course, but you don't, you, even then you don't have to, you don't have to answer that door. I a hundred percent agree. And I'm just going to echo that fact because at the end of the day, having label support can be a really good thing. I also think that bands in today's world can go a lot farther without that support. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I will say, like I said, labels can help you really up your game, but like there's a lot, you can cover a lot more ground independently than I think people realize. And uh, we're really excited to kind of see how that goes. You know what I mean? Yeah. L let me leave you with this, Ryan. Um, back in the day, I don't know, around 2000, we probably spent 30 grand on a brand new van, brand new, never driven, kind of crazy. We probably should have got something used, but we got 30 grand and the, the record label at the time gave us money. But mm -hmm. nowadays that 30 grand might go to like, we could buy a robot and now you've got a merch <laughs> robot that could load all your gear, maybe yeah. even drive for you. Yeah. The world is, just, is, is really opening it up, man. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm kind of excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what that that Tesla robot as a merch stand attendant might be the that's probably going to be in the next two years. I, 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 I somebody you, somebody will somebody do it. Somebody's doing it. Yeah. Just remember, you heard it here first, folks. All right. Yep. <laughs> Peace. Just out. like you heard about crypto two years ago. <laughs> that's right. I hope you all got rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, Ryan. Thanks for being on, man. I'll, I'll talk to you soon again. Awesome. Thank all you, right. Mike. I appreciate it. Take care. Much love. Peace. All right, thanks to my guest, Ryan BB of Goalkeeper. Um, they got a new EP out. It's called Pins and Needles. Go check it. Uh, go listen. And MXPX has some shows. We're going to be in Chicago. That's um, Friday the 13th in December and, and Saturday the 14th in December. Two nights at Metro. Don't miss it. Tickets on sale right now, mxpx.com. And then kicking off the new year in Texas, House of Blues, Houston, January 3rd. House of Blues, Dallas, January 4th. Tickets on sale at mxpx.com. We got new merch. We've been just going crazy lately. Uh, live streams. And of course, Halloween is about to happen. By the time you listen to this, maybe it's it's already 
gone. I don't know. Just don't wait. Get to whatever it is you want to do in your life because life don't wait. All right. Before I go, I just want to say shout out to my boy, Bob McKnight, for producing, editing, helping me out with the podcast. Thank you all for listening. If you want to submit, call in, leave a voicemail. The number is 360-830-6660. You can submit a YouTube link of your band's song to Music Monday on the uh, podcast group, My Career Podcast Facebook group. Um, and I'll see you online and I'll see you out there at the shows. All right. Much love.